Here I go again. I probably should not fall into the Terrell Owens trap again, but I can't help myself and neither can Terrell. We have had this discussion, Terrell and I, too many times to count on live national TV face to face. I have actually come to like Terrell. I have. I congratulated him face to face on Undisputed for finally getting into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Wouldn't be in my Hall of Fame, but congratulations because you were really great at what you did. I didn't love the rest of it, which I'm about to get to, but here we go again because just when I thought we had made peace with each other, this happened. A tweet from Terrell Owens concerning me and Odell. Terrell starts out, facts, all caps, with three exclamation points, and then 100 in red, as in keep it 100. At Browns, at Baker Mayfield, are some suckers, says T.O. At Real Skip Bayless, that's me, always and forever, capitalized, creating, capitalized, false narratives about certain players, all caps. He did it for years about me, and people believed it. So happy for at OBJ, tweeted T.O. Okay, so T.O. is saying that always and forever I've been creating false narratives about certain players, that I did it for years about him, and people believed it. T.O., I, I try to love you, man. I do. I try from the bottom of my heart. But I'm sorry. You and Odell created your own narratives. I, I simply commented on said narratives many times. I, I just reacted. I didn't preact. I didn't make up the narrative. I just reacted to the narrative. <sighs> so just briefly, now that you've pushed my button, forgive me for this, but I, I got to run back through my, my history with T.O., I was in the Bay Area. He was a 49er. I liked him. In fact, I loved him. I think I was the lone voice in the Bay Area who supported him. What a player. Played with such rage, run after catch rage. I wrote glowingly positive columns about one Terrell Owens. I, I even had a big interview, a long interview. It was actually on the phone, but he called me back and we talked for an hour. I think he liked me. I don't know, but he was very willing to spill, and he did. And he spilled all over the 49ers, and I ran with it, and that's, that's fine. I did what I did, and I stand by it, and I don't regret it, but I must admit, Several of the 49er leaders, black and white, began to pull me aside and say, what are you doing? You, you have no idea what this guy is behind closed locker room doors. He's a nightmare. He's tearing our team apart. Really? Okay. So I opened my eyes. I opened my ears. I opened my heart. And I'll never forget the game back after 9-11 at Candlestick against the then arch-rival St. Louis Rams, a dominating team, as you recall, in 2001. Rams won the game in large part because our man T.O. dropped two or three huge passes in that game. It so affected him that he sat at his locker almost comatose after the game while the media throng just stood waiting for him to speak. And as I recall, I don't think he ever spoke after that game. He just stared into his locker and wouldn't comment. Terrell led the league in drops three different times. And I'll never forget a game at Chicago, a game that the 49ers led, then blew it, trailed, and lost to a pretty mediocre Bears team coached by Dick Jerron, who was then a friend or is a friend of 
Steve Mariucci, then the coach of the 49ers, and Terrell just went off after the game on Mariucci, saying he took his foot off the gas and basically threw the game to his dear friend Dick Duran. I can tell you for a fact, the late, great Terry Donahue, then GM of the 49ers, not happy with that. I think it was the last straw for Terry with T.O. And then the next thing was T.O. went after Jeff Garcia, and I think it was a Playboy interview, and took a really low blow personal shot at Jeff. And then he began to campaign for Jeff's removal from starting quarterback in favor of Tim Rattay, the backup. And it just went completely off the rails to the point that Terry Donahue said, more trouble than he's worth. Great player, more trouble than he's worth. I got to get him out of here. And he winds up trading him to Philly. And I think you remember what happened. First training camp, T.O. and Donovan McNabb, best friends, soulmates, roommates. And then it all went wrong. It exploded the way no friendship has ever maybe exploded in, in the history of pro football. It got ugly between the two of them. It's too much for this. I could go on talking about what went on behind the scenes for another hour, and we don't have it. But that team began to split over T.O., and there are always players who love him, and there are always players who just find him impossible to live with. And that team began to fracture. And that, once again, is why I nicknamed Terrell T.O. Team Obliterator. And it got so bad, as you probably remember, that the Eagles suspended T.O. and sent him home, sent him away, and finally just dumped him and said, way more trouble than he's worth. Did, did I create that narrative, Terrell? Did I? I don't think I created the San Francisco narrative or the Philly narrative or the Dallas narrative. So Jerry Jones says, I'm taking a shot. He's box office. Get your popcorn ready. Despite the fact that the Hall of Fame coach Bill Parcells, then coaching my Dallas Cowboys, wanted no part of Terrell Owens, wouldn't even speak his name, called him the player. Terrell protested, rebelled. Remember in training camp, he wound up with a Lance Armstrong costume on on the exercise bike on the sideline. That was pretty much the end of him and Parcells. And as you remember, the Cowboys just flat out cut Terrell Owens. They cut him. False narrative? I, I don't think so. So we had the 49ers and the Eagles and the Cowboys, all three really good teams. Th those are three potential at that point Super Bowl teams. Seriously, I know them. Traded, suspended and cut, cut. Is that a Hall of Fame resume? Not for me, but what he did on the field was spectacular. And to Terrell's credit, nothing off the field in the way of any misbehavior, no police blotter stuff, nothing like that. It's all in the locker room, in the huddle, on the sideline. Remember his rant against Greg Knapp? ranting up and down. It was at Minnesota in a game he faced Randy Moss, and, man, and Randy Moss was just terrorizing the 49ers that day. It, it's, I, I didn't do that, Terrell. You did that. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.